Nice sunset. Nice tan. But what's the real choice between Charlie Crist and Governor Scott? Charlie Crist slashed state education by nearly $1.4 billion. Under Rick Scott, education funding's at an all-time high. Governor Crist lost 800,000 jobs. Scott helped create nearly 600,000 jobs. Crist maxed out the state credit card. Scott reduced state debt by $3 billion. Charlie Crist, he's smooth. Rick Scott, he's the better governor. Get ready for Latina, like it or not. So that was not the first affair. There was three more. Well, I went after her and I beat her up where she got into the car and wouldn't come out. Are you naked? Yeah. You know, getting all sexy and, you know, getting my groove on. He actually got the fist and just popped me in the face. So tune in every Tuesday. We're going to be here bringing it like it is from 10 to 10.30. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you every Tuesday night at this time, 9.30 p.m. on Bright House Cable Networks. We've been on the air with Hispanic Speak Out for 14 years, sponsored by Bright House Cable Networks, and we want to thank them. And also, we are at Sanford Brown University, where we tape the show. After the show is over, you can tune in to Latina, Like It or Not, which is a great, fun, and controversial show where Latinas will talk about issues that are pertinent to their everyday lives, their relationships, their professions. And you're going to hear some stuff on the show at 10 o'clock uh, on the next show, which is fun and uh, I'm sure it'll interest you. I'm here with Maria Padilla, who is a nationally well-known journalist uh, from the Hispanic community, and uh, Jose Miranda, who is the co-host for Hispanic Speak Out. How are you doing, guys? Good. What's up? Pretty okay. good. Pretty good. Let's talk about... Um, Security at the White House and security in the country as a whole. Jose, pick up because, no, Maria, you go first, because you're the one who said that the guy who jumped the fence was going for what? He was going to apply for a job? He was Puerto Rican? <laughs> <laughs> it was Jose who said he was going for coffee. He was, okay. uh, he was, he was going invited for by the president <laughs> for a cup of coffee. For a cup of coffee. Yeah. What I read was that he is Puerto Rican, you? Yeah. Uh, and that he may have possibly suffered from or be suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD. Was that a military thing or no? Yes, he was in the military. Um, he did serve. Uh, he did come back. From Afghanistan. From Afghanistan. Right. So it, it fairly recently or, fr or in the last several years. So it, it's, it's up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he made it all the way in, didn't he, Jose? How far did he get? Because originally they said, the Secret Service said, this guy only got in to the, touch the front door. He got up to the second floor, the East Room. Uh, yeah. when he was tackled. Apparently, so where was the Secret Service? Having donuts in the well, kitchen? I mean, what's... Well, apparently the Pillsbury Doughboy, who was on the first floor, <laughs> was unable to capture him or stop him. Right, he did confront somebody, but he didn't And then he past. went... He went... What do you say? He got the Secret Service guy? Pillsbury Doughboy. Okay, the, 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 the Secret Service... I mean, I'm happy, but it's not funny. In, but it's, in my it's estimation, like, should be uh, well-trained, trim, Okay, he shouldn't have a gut. He should be able to uh, take care of whatever yeah, business he Yeah, he's got to be martial with. arts and okay. everything. But how do we know that they aren't? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that the guy at the front door was having a, a coffee and a donut, so that interfered with him. So the guy got past him, went up to the second floor, went around to a couple of rooms where he was confronted by somebody that seriously knows what to do, and he was stopped at that point. I, mm -hmm. I don't think he went to the second floor, though. I think he, he, went he to got the east room. to the east room. Right. Is that on the second floor? Yeah. And then he made it as far as the, the green room, yeah. and that's where he was stopped, yeah. which is pretty far either way you that's, look at it. Can you imagine far. being ISIS or some uh, terrorist extremist, you know, a guy thinking, oh, what can I do? Right. You know, all you need is five guys to wipe out everybody in the White House with that mentality. No, you don't. There's one guy sprinting across the lawn with two, two Secret Service on top, sharpshooters on the roof who are observing this. And I understand it's up to it. They have the, the, the Secret Service has a discretion whether to fire upon. Are you saying there were two Secret Service guys on the roof at the time? Yes. All the time. All and they didn't time. take them out? No. No. They have the discretion. They have the discretion. Whoever gives the, the command. How did they know that the guy didn't have a uh, bomb strapped to him underneath his shirt or something? He must his have car. Had, his car have, had a great deal of um, yeah. explosives. But I think what, it, what, what threw them off was the Budweiser shirt. And so they just, they just, oh no, he's wearing a Budweiser shirt, we can't do that. Okay. You know, but it ISIS. gets worse, but it gets worse. It didn't say ISIS on it. No, it said ISIS, said Budweiser, so okay. it was okay. Because didn't we also just find out that um, uh, the, some other guy, not this guy, who has shot into the White House, yep. they said it was only like two or three 
hits to the White House, and then it turns out that it was 11. Yeah. So somebody took 11 shots at the White House, right. and we're only finding out about this. In the was that the one that the Secret Service never knew about, and it was uh, some worker in the White House picked up shells or something? Or they said the Secret Service never did it. Heard, until but it's somebody quite else found it. Was, it was an accountant who was learning how to count. And so those rounds hitting the building it was, was it was difficult. You know, one, it wasn't two, that. It was the window washer. The, uh, the window it was the window <laughs> washer, right? <laughs> so <laughs> who noticed the holes you know, in so the I, windows? <laughs> you know, I, let, this president okay. has been okay, so let's threatened and by then, more people and then than just, peanut butter and They jelly. just announced okay. uh, a week ago that the president got into an elevator right. with Secret Service guys, okay, this was announced, right. and in the elevator walks a guy who was a convicted felon who was armed right. with a gun. And he I got into the that. elevator with the president. Right. Come on in, don't know, you don't have to wait, come on in. And he got into the elevator with the president. What does that tell you? Wow. Either we're setting up this president to be assassinated, so, th so that we can, so someone out there can say, it is not their fault, it's not an ideology thing. It's just a breakdown in in, talk like in, 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 in uh, security. So we'll lose the president in the process. No, don't talk like Because that. of their negativity, because their failure to actually but the, There are a lot of secure. crazy people out there. The, and that's the yeah, only thing. Coming, because they're a copycat. Exactly. This president so has somebody been, takes you know, a shot, another person takes another no, step. But this president has been threatened than more people than, than any other than president. Than other prior presidents. Okay, that is true. Than, than peanut butter and jelly mix combined, okay? This guy has been threatened, and yet we're having people pretty much tattoo the crap out of the building, go upstairs and, and want to have coffee with the president, and nobody's, nobody's stopping him. Nobody's stopping him. They're not even getting hurt in the process. Okay, they're coming across the lawn. They got, they have clearly, they have film of these guys running across the lawn. This guy has been stopped before with a zillion rounds of stuff. Yeah. All right. And then it's like, what, what I don't you, understand is you have sharpshooters on the roof. Their job is to shoot. Yes. Yeah. When ordered. They, but they, don't, well, they might have not the, have seen them. They may not have. Well, come on. What, 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 what else do do on top of the roof? Well, they I don't know. They were it's, having it's a barbecuing. It's a nice day. Well, yeah. look at that but I tell you street. what happens, what? because this is what always happens in Washington. What happens is that they have finished grilling the, um, the head of the Secret Service, right? She needs to go. And she will lose her job at some appropriate moment, yep. uh, you know, a couple of weeks from now or whatever. She's good. And, uh, and then they'll bring in a new person, and supposedly the whole issue is fixed. The you problem know, is fixed. What, what about, you know what mm -hmm. I think, you know, here's an alternative to that. There is, but that's not the only area that's latched. That is probably the most critical area because you're protecting the President of the United States. If they can't protect him here, what the hell do they do when he goes overseas? Well, that's the point that I brought up a few, uh, a few okay. minutes ago. Do you ago remember here. the Colombia, Cartagena, Colombia incident? Where the Secret, in which Service, the Secret Service had got drunk and they had prostitutes in their rooms. And well, that's, you know, they were just socializing, making sure <laughs> public, you know, they, they, got they were building up relations, relations with, the with, the with the Colombians. Okay, so just a little thing like that. That was, that that was, was okay. peacekeeping. Peacekeeping. Uh, right. Peacekeeping. Keeping. You yeah, know, yeah. a little hello, but, how are you? From but the you United would think States. that after that incident, they would they would have cracked down on everybody. Well, they supposedly did, apparently. but apparently not. No, that's got it's it's this you know it comes Houston. down. That's an yeah. attitude that comes. You're a you're a cop. You know, that's a management thing that comes down from yeah. the top. You know, if your top guy is laxed and is not on, people are human. They lay back. Yeah. yeah. You know, they lay back. You if get they a little don't feel safe the top, or yeah. The so secret, you know, the Secret Service has one job. One job only. It's not to do barbecues, serve coffee, give the president pencils, walk, he, dogs. Even, walk dogs, and none of that crap, okay? It's to protect the first family, period. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if they can't yeah. do their job, get somebody else in well, there. Well, somebody at the top is not doing it right, but that's mm -hmm. also happening in other areas. You know, it's not, this is, the Secret Service is not the only area that's laxed, that's been... No. That's had major problems. We had the, the veterans situation oh, yeah. with all the veterans yeah. hospitals. And you got the FBI it comes from and the top. Else, yeah. We had a problem with the FBI too. Right. And it seems to be a laxed attitude at the top in different departments. Yeah. It's a tired administration, which is a lot of these things almost always happen. In Not the, the president. president. It's, it's just the people on top who have been doing this for. Apparently, doing it for too long. That's they need fresh time. races. Yeah, yeah. It's not the administration. Listen, we got to take Jose. We got to take a break. We're going to be right back. Continue the conversation. We have some great commercials for you to listen to. Don't forget to see Latina, like it or not, at 10 o'clock tonight. As soon as the show's over, you're going to enjoy Latina, like it or not. We'll be right back. Before I became a graphic designer, 
I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real-life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-918-6444. Florida is creating some jobs. Jobs right now, they're coming back up. Governor Scott has done great things to help us move ahead. This right here, what you see right here, is a small business. And Governor Scott has helped this business tremendously. If you look at what he's done in the last four years, why would you want to go back? Governor Chris uh, was a governor that was not looking out for Florida. Florida lost 800,000 jobs over Charlie Chris. I think there'll be a lot of businesses move out of Florida and a lot of jobs lost if Charlie Chris comes back. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit HispanicAchievers.org. Hey, welcome back to Hispanic Speak Out TV. I'm Danny Ramos, and we've been talking about the lacks of security in uh, Washington, D.C. and what's been affecting the White House. I'm here with Maria Padilla, who's a national journalist, and also uh, Jose Miranda, who's the co-host for the show. We were just talking about the lacks of how people, how this guy actually got into the White House, there's sharpshooters on the roof, and they let this guy get to the second floor of the White House. Mm -hmm. Then there were bullets shot into the White House, nobody knew about that for two weeks, and now an armed felon got into the elevator with the president, that was reported, and they're grilling the head of the Secret Service, which is a woman, right. into how can this happen. As a matter of fact, there was a senator who, uh, when he was talking to... Uh, the Secret Service director who said to her... Eisner? Yeah, you, no, he's, it no. was John Micah. He held he Micah. The ADT he side? said, maybe <laughs> this will help you. <laughs> of course, ADT stock went up. <laughs> you know, exactly, that, that happened. Exactly. Because mean, one of the things they reported is that the uh, alarm system had been deactivated in the White House. That's how we got that far. So there was like a whole series of things that went wrong. Who deactivated the... Uh... What I read is that the ushers complained I got about the, great the cover noise... Story that it, it, it made when it was tripped or something like that, and so well, they asked for it to be That's important. The ushers complain. That's this important. This is exactly <laughs> what I read, folks. We take, take no that lie. usher and put him in charge of <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> oh, so let's, shut yeah. off, let's shut off the safety of the White House because the usher. That's yeah, he's, 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 he's got hard. a problem with his ears. And serving coffee at the same time. I, yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. I know that's derogatory, but I apologize. Just, just but. simply unbelievable what's going on. Um, so we had that other guy, you know, in the elevator situation, and God knows what other stuff has gone on that we don't know about. Security but in this country as a whole, just I, across the board, is lacking. Oh, you're talking about the border. Okay, no, I'm talking about... You're talking about, about the border, security on the border. I, mean, I agree with you. Not I disagree. This is the no, first no, no. time I we disagree agree. with that. We agree. That's listen, not what he's saying. Listen to the security <laughs> in the workplace, for example. Okay, well, ah, we, have, we had an incident recently in Oklahoma. And we call it work? Where workplace uh, violence? A disgruntled employee who okay. was a wannabe I tell you what. Muslim decided to behead someone and was in the process to behead someone else when he was shot by one of the corporate entities there. Yeah, one of the corporate, he was a CEO or the CEO. And he was a part-time uh, police officer. He was a that volunteer was really reserve. Grisly. Okay, really so... Uh, so but, he, what, but okay, let but me I'm ask talking you this. about security. If you fire somebody, let's I, back up a little bit. Wait a minute. Go ahead, if go ahead. you if you got fired from AT and T, they bring six guys to take you out of the building. That's right. Okay? And you can't get back in. And you can't come and back you in. You cannot go back. You in. can't get. You yeah, can't even get your a, umbrella is, that you left back. This is a different kind of mentality. A different mm. town. This is not New York, and it's not. This no, was this a is town plan. It should be. It should be across the board. Well, you are a potential it looks nutcase. Like, it looks like Just the like security you're guard. Just like potential nutcase. I'd be afraid of you. Well, okay. Then don't sit too close, bro. I am not. I'm don't sit too close. That's why I'm yeah. between okay. them. <laughs> the only thing that we do together is doing forks at, at Olive Garden. <laughs> See, who can create the biggest... So, but it is a corporate fork. policy but, as to how they yeah, handle the HR policy. You, you guys are going... I understand that. I understand that. But let's talk about the implication of what it really is. You use the word terrorist. 
But the policy of this country does not use, they call it workplace violence. This guy, the thing that happened with the colonel in the army when he shot all those people, also okay? Not job. That was in the army. He was, was in El the Paso, army. Paso, Texas? Yeah. Right. Workplace violence. Texas. And he declared himself as a Muslim extremist. Right. And he said, I killed those people because I'm a Muslim extremist. Right, okay. and this okay. guy is so, trying to say the same thing, well, except he's they're saying to say, that the connection okay. is weak. So why are we calling, why are we creating this semantic baloney Right. And why don't why isn't the policy of this country and to say it's a terrorist attack? Why is it workplace violence? Everybody knows that's not workplace violence. That's not workplace because, violence. Because because they're uh-huh. not they're not saying that this guy is actually a uh, he a lot of jihadist right. or something. But he As you said himself. he's a wannabe Muslim. He's a wannabe. But he, that doesn't make him that doesn't a make him part of part of yeah. a group. Okay, that's okay. why I So now let's say you have thirty thousand individuals who right. decide, hey, I'm not a member of ISIS. I've never been there. I'm in the United States. Let's say you have uh, uh, five thousand people. Let's say we're all individuals. They call them lone wolves. Right. We're going to act on our own. So you're saying that's not that's not terrorists so because you're saying, they are not. So I'm you're under, you're uh, saying Danny Ramos is saying tonight that we should possibly get in the in the. Let's get the buses all lined up, get the wagons circled, and let's arrest every Muslim that's out there just to prevent that from happening. No, because, I don't say that. Uh, then I don't what, say that. What are you saying? So what, are you what saying? I'm saying is, is that we should call it what it is. First, you've got to be honest in yeah. presenting your facts with journalists, right. supposedly. You know and I know, if you're a journalist, you present the facts, the reality. Right. This guy said that he was an extremist Muslim right. and he had his Facebook page and they have all documentation that he was a lone wolf okay he didn't go over there and come back he was a lone wolf that picked up the concept okay. of it and ran with but, it but let's, right. let's, but let's, what so, they're, what so they're what I'm saying to you is, is he isn't really no, uh, he's not, uh, a he's not even following jihadist. the Quran he's not an, in, in his what did they call that Islamic jihadist yes. he, He's what not. they're saying okay. is that he's not. I okay. don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they're saying. But he, he's not even found. The Quran doesn't Why? say, let's go behead the crap out of people. It well, doesn't, wait a second. There, there, are, there are things in the Quran that says to kill the infidels and take off their limbs. Okay? There is, it's in the Quran. There, it is. Okay. Okay, that's in the Quran. I know it's in the Quran. But that's not what I'm talking about. What so I'm you, talking are you, about are you coming a out government... Now? No. Are you what coming I'm, out? You're what coming I'm, out. What I'm Danny's talking, coming out. What I'm talking about is a government policy to try to cap and not properly name what it is. All right. When was the last time we had a beheading in the United States? I can't remember. Listen, listen. It was in 2007. The last time you killed a chicken was, it, yeah, in okay. your backyard, well, that, that was a beheading. A, that happens in Puerto Rican restaurants but, all the time. But that's a beheading. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not into that. I'm into frozen food. Okay, I just said <laughs> I'm into frozen food. And smoking cigars. So when was, and, that's you, you know, smoking that's a cigar. Okay. Okay, but when was the last time? It was in 2007, and it was also a guy who claimed to be a Muslim extremist. When okay. did that happen? In 2007. What incident was that? I don't know the location, but I looked it up when the last time was. It was 2007, and it was a Muslim extremist. Anyway, Goodness. so why don't we call it what it is? Why, do, why are we afraid to say... The guy claims to be a Muslim, mm-hmm. and he chopped off somebody's but, head. But they not... did say it. That's how you know it. Yeah, but the policy of the media, certain medias, and the White House is to say workplace violence. They put it in the statistical column of workplace violence. Why? Because they're afraid to say they're losing the war on terror, that the war on terror has come no, to the United States, and the everybody's right? going to be afraid? We have a fringe out there that follow you, for example, and we don't want to stoke those, those freaks. To, to do something that you think that's going to stop him? I, I you know, think people just that, don't know. When, when for a guy sure. has that mindset, right. you're not going to stop him by calling. He's going to just see it for what he is. Hey, he beheaded. I'm going to go behead somebody. You know, they're not. That's not going to stop him by calling it workplace violence versus you know a terrorist, an independent wolf, lone wolf terrorist. He's going to do it anyway. You know, that's not going to stop him. And you're going to see there's going to be more of that. I got news for you. I there's going to be not. more of that. I hope well, not. Well, hoping and, you know, that's what they said. I know. Hoping and praying is one thing. Is one I, thing. I and the actual not. reality is that we have people that are off the wall in this country. Well, yeah, but we've always there are known people that. that. Of course there are people I know, off but the now, wall in But this now country. there's a difference. Now they have a way of justifying their behavior. You see, before they didn't have a way of psychologically justifying, I'm a murderer. No, no, no. You're not a murderer. What you're doing is you're following a political and religious thought process. So you're okay. You're allowed to do that now. It's not okay, actually. I read something no, but recently for you that was very, okay. that was that right up what you're saying, uh, that a lot of the, mostly guys, 
uh, that are going to the Middle East or the Far East to fight for ISIS are really people who are sociopaths and so forth well, who, that could want be. To, who want to commit murder. I read a very but intelligent that's exactly interview my about point. that. They're, they're just, just using that, that as an excuse. They're, they're not really right. so, Muslim. They're okay. not, they don't know anything about it. I agree with you. That's exactly they what just I'm want saying. to go over there and kill off a well, few people. Yeah, but now they can stay here and they're, they're picking it up here and they're justifying it through religion or through political philosophy that I am not a murderer. I'm doing it because I believe in this in this thought process. Of course, it's not all Muslims. It's wackos. There's no question it's wackos. But they're using that to justify it. Okay? Listen, we, we just ran out of time. We, we could have gone on for a little bit longer. This is Danny Ramos on Hispanic Speak Out TV, and we're here every Tuesday night at 9.30. I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Miss Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing, we teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion, and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Get ready for Latina, like it or not. So that was not the first affair. There was three more. Saw that I went after her and I beat her up where she got into the car and wouldn't come out. Were you naked? Yeah. You know, getting all sexy and, you know, getting my groove on. He actually got the fist and just popped me in the face. So tune in every Tuesday. We're going to be here bringing it like it is. From 10 to 10.30. Nice sunset, nice tan. But what's the real choice between Charlie Crist and Governor Scott? Charlie Crist slashed state education by nearly $1.4 billion. Under Rick Scott, education funding's at an all-time high. Governor Crist lost 800,000 jobs. Scott helped create nearly 600,000 jobs. Crist maxed out the state credit card. Scott reduced state debt by $3 billion. Charlie Crist, he's smooth. Rick Scott, he's the better governor. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out. Tonight we're speaking with Dolores Guzman, and she is an advocate in the neighbor, a neighborhood, in the community, and she has something she wants our listeners to know. Mi querido pueblo latino, quiero hablarles de lo más profundo de mi corazón. Muchos políticos dicen que este no es nuestro país, que nos debemos regresar de donde vinimos. Sin embargo, de la única manera que nos podemos hacer valer, respetar y contar es con nuestro voto. Tenemos que demostrarles a los políticos de esta nación que la comunidad hispana dirá presente en las elecciones 2014. Estas elecciones son muy importantes porque nuestras vidas diarias dependen de las leyes que nuestros políticos electos ejercen a diarios en nuestras ciudades, condados y estados. Te invito a que como parte del sueño americano al que aspiramos todos es que votes en las elecciones primarias en agosto 26 y en las elecciones generales en noviembre 4. Si no estás inscrito para votar, visita a tu oficina más cercana de elecciones, de supervisor de elecciones, tu oficina de tu partido preferido o tu biblioteca local. Para ejercer un voto inteligente, conoce a tus candidatos locales Ellos son los portavoces en tu ciudad y tu condado. Inscríbete a Latino, infórmate mi gente y vota, es tu derecho. Mi nombre es Dolores Guzmán, activista latina. Si me necesitas mi ayuda, llama al 407-314-4007. What else can Gracias. I tell you, folks? This is Hispanic Speak Out. She has the last word. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Get ready for Latina, like it or not. So that was not the first affair. There was three more. Saw that I went after her and I beat her up where she got into the car and wouldn't come out. Were you naked? Yeah. You know, getting all sexy and, you know, getting my groove on. He actually got the fist and just popped me in the face. So tune in every Tuesday. We're going to be here bringing it like it is from 10 to 10.30. And welcome back to Hispanic Speak Out TV. I have the pleasure of having Tina Caria Bayo 
I might have to say it very slowly since I am not Hispanic. But however, she is running for Group 10 Orange County Judge position. I had the pleasure of meeting her very early on where we as a page of Facebook became a live group, right? You're a part of that. Yes. And it was really fun because it gave us an opportunity to really find out the process of how judges are elected into their positions, um, which I found interesting because I would think as a judge, you would be voted on by your peers. I, f I find it odd that you know, you're voted by the people when we really don't know anything about you, right? I mean, that seems, seems interesting that it's that way. Yeah, thank you, Glenda. A lot of people do not realize that judges are elected by the voters in Orange County and throughout the state of Florida. We have some judges that are appointed by the governor, but for the most part, our county and circuit court judges right. are elected. And so it is absolutely critical, and they're elected in the primaries. I'm moving on to the general election because I was in a three-way race, and while I won the primary, I did not win by more than 50% of the vote. Therefore, the top right. two vote getters are moving on to the runoff in the general election. And I think that's important for people to understand because when I am a first time voter and I do, I go out and tell everybody that I'm the poster child for the reasons that we need to go out and vote. I mean, you really can be a part of a solution. But the one thing that I think people don't realize, and there's such a low voter turnout, is they don't think the primaries are that important. Me personally, I feel it's very important, as we've talked about, I'm in foreclosure law. And I see a lot of these senior judges sitting up there with this, I don't want to say old time mentality, but in a way I feel that way as a person just observing in the court. So it's, it's refreshing to know that we can vote in people that are younger. <laughs> and I asked you if you're going to stay for 30 years and you laughed at me and said, no way. But you know that you, you come in with a new fresh perspective in law and what's going on in the world today. Um, what are your feelings about that, you know, being able to come in with a new, fresh uh, way of looking at law and things that have changed over the years? Well, I think that's really important, Glenda, and I do believe that I bring a fresh perspective to the bench. In the county court here in Orange County, many of our judges have criminal law background experience. Mm -hmm. And during the uh, campaigning process, it came up frequently that I do not have a criminal law background and how would that impact my ability to decide cases. So I think that it's a real advantage that I bring this fresh perspective to mm -hmm. the bench. You know, judges are going to be required to make rulings on areas of the law that they have no experience with. We have so many areas of the law, it's just not possible for an attorney to be familiar with everything. So my background and experience in complex commercial litigation, mm -hmm. construction litigation, the, my appellate work, my legal research and writing, I think all of those things have prepared sure. me to take the bench and really make informed decisions. I don't go in there with any preconceived notions. I, I mm -hmm. don't think I know it all because <laughs> I know I don't. Right. So I'm, I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to read the cases. I'm going to read the pleadings. I'm going right. to listen to the attorneys uh, when they make the arguments. And I really think that I'll be a breath of fresh air on the bench mm -hmm. and really beneficial to all the litigants utilizing our court system. Well, no matter how you look at it, I mean, law is complex, period. I mean, you, you read a law, you read a, a paragraph, and it's, you know, it, it takes a lot of studying and research to really understand the different laws that have been set forth. So congratulations to getting it this far. I wish you would have won in the primaries, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. But, um, you know, everybody get out there and vote this year. It's so important, especially in Orange County. We need to make some changes in, in our area, and I think it's real important that we do that. So thank you so much for coming thank this you, evening. Glenda. And uh, listen, stay tuned. We have Latina, like it or not, and it's going to be hot. You don't want to miss it. Thank you.